The world's largest undersea cable system will reach KwaZulu-Natal this weekend. The arrival of the 45,000-kilometer cable is expected to accelerate growth of South Africa's digital economy. Nobile Matlala has been speaking to several stakeholders about how this technology will benefit South Africans. Uh, and you join us one against, uh, once again, Nobile, for more on this. We spoke to you earlier about the opportunities that a cable system of this nature creates for the country. You are actually actually in the same vicinity that that cable is at and you're going to give us the specifics of how the system actually works. Well, yes, definitely, Rafiwa. In fact, right behind me is where they are actually working on the cable itself. So what you see, the, those are strings that make the actual cable. But I want to bring in my guest who's going to give us all the details in terms of what really makes this fiber cable and why is it important. And I mean, how long have you been doing this and why is this cable important to us? I've been working for this company for three years. So we're laying uh, ultraline, we're laying optical cables all around the world. Why it's important? Because it's connecting remote areas to increase internet speeds, to allow accessibility, and to allow people to be connected to the World Wide Web and to access to new jobs and new possibilities. And I want us to show, I want you to show us what's, what's the process that's currently taking place here. If you can just tell us a bit about what, what I imagine the engineers are currently doing. So if you see on this sample, the all, all colored uh, fibers, this is basically the optical fiber to which the internet signal is passing. And then you can see that it's like protected by a small tube and around and there goes another type of armor with copper. So it's protecting the cable to avoid water interest, ingress because of course it's passing over the ocean's uh, bottom. And this is a plastic tube which is even uh, melted around. So it's basically just plastic covering the copper and the armor to uh, avoid that any water is entering into the optical fibers. And what are they doing here then? At the moment, at the moment, they are connecting uh, different types of fibers and they are splicing them together. So, for example, if you have this type of blue cable on the other side, you have another blue fiber. They bring them together and they splice them, which is a very sensitive job because if it's not perfectly aligned, the internet signal will not pass through. Let's see that um, that that very important critical job. That's what we see right there. Um, the engineers just working on that cable. We do know that this is very technical, so it's very small. I must say, um, I wouldn't imagine that's how, that's that's how big it's supposed to be, considering the fact that I'm using internet and we use a lot of memory and so on. Um, tell me a bit about the importance then of size. It's uh, the, the size of the fibers is actually very small. So as you can see, this is uh, the type of cable, the white piece is the type of cable that is left mostly around the world, which is really not very wide. But it's all about these fibers. So they are very strong if you keep them in the longitudinal way. But the big danger is if you bend them. If you bend them, they might break. But in general, this type of cable is strong enough and it's led all around the Pacific and Atlantic Ocean. And I mean, I understand behind us, and I want us to walk there so we can see what's really happening. It's a, a very small space, a reviewer, so we're going to try and squeeze through. We can already see the cable right behind us. We can see people working on it just at this point. Um, tell me about the process that's currently taking place. It looks like it's covered in a lot of, of, of a stuff. It's not as small as what we have have seen in that process. Just tell us what's happening here specifically. The difference is that you still have this type of polyterrane cable, so which is basically a plastic tube, but then you put around um, metal wires as a protection. For example, if you have a rocky seabed, you want to avoid that the cable got damaged by the by the seabed, by the underground. So that's why the client can ask to reinforce this type of cable by adding armor. As you can see, this one is quite similar to this one. The only difference is we add steel wires to reinforce the cable to make sure it's being able to be exposed to more vibrations, shocks like underwater earthquakes and so on. Also, the biggest danger of the cable is fishermen. If fishing ships start drag trailing their nets, it's possible that they damage our cable, especially this cable, because it's uh, quite thin. That's why these kind of armored uh, wires and the additional protection is a good way of assuring the life guarantee of your cable of 20 years.
20 years. That's how long you can keep that cable for. So they're starting in this process. So is this before they're able to put so much on it to protect it? Yes. Tell us about this process that they're currently working on. So what they are basically doing on board is we are demolishing the armor. For example, if we have a deficiency on the cable, we will open up all the cable to find the fault and to reconnect the fibers in a good way. So what they are currently doing is they are preparing to join the cable, which means connecting two parts to each other and integrating again and assuring you get a, single, a signal all along the cable. But to apply the metal wires, this is all done in the factory and this is situated in Calais, France. So the cable is manufactured in France. The only thing we do here is we install and if necessary, do necessary repairs or adjustments to the system. And I mean, if there's any breakage that happens under the sea, um, who install, who, who takes care of that, um, that problem there? Who, who fixes that issue? If the cable is broken in the middle of the ocean, they will send one repair ship. So we are a cable laying ship, an installation ship, but we also have ships which are designated for repairs. So they will uh, pick up the cable, bring it again above the seabed, take it on the ship, cut the mistake. So they cut the arrow out of the cable and then we joined it again. That's what those guys are doing here. They know how to rejoin the cable and make the signal integral again. All right. Very interesting indeed. Thank you very much for speaking to us. Well, that is the process taking place here, Rafio. As you can see, it's very busy, very tight spots, but you can see that they're doing their work layers and layers. So the cable that we're initially speaking about is right inside here, but it's covered completely to ensure that there's no water damage and so on, as you can hear from her saying that it's a major, major job. But of course, if there's anything happening, they then come back and look at that cable again and find somebody who's going to fix it and they obviously go through the same process but now they'll be using different um different ship which i understand is going to then cover up and that's where they drain the water and make sure that there's space for them to be able to work with the cable but at this point they're just preparing it to be ready to go onto the seabed very, very interesting insights indeed in Mobile. And thank you for bringing us uh, those excellent visuals, uh, giving us a practical sense of what we're talking about when we speak about these fiber cable systems and where they go. Um, very interesting to know that our internet and our connectivity to the rest of the world comes from those little, little fibers that are running along uh, the seabed across uh, KwaZulu Natal and, of course, uh, the rest of the world. Uh, that is Mobile Matlala on the Iran of that 45,000 kilometer and to see fiber cable in a KZN.